Okay, we're going to take a look at sensory input and different ways that our body can detect different types of external stimuli and then we'll try to define stimulus as well. So sensory systems help us to maintain homeostasis by constantly adjusting body conditions to respond to changes in the environment. We're going to see many specific examples of this. So this information we take in from our, you've heard of the five senses, right? Some people claim they have a sixth sense. Very little scientific evidence to back that up. But that information we get in through our eyes and ears from taste, uh, heat receptors, pain receptors, is sent to the brain. And if necessary, we generate some kind of response to it. So some of these are reflexes, some, are, some of these things are voluntary, and it's a motor response is what we're actually doing with our effectors, either secreting hormones or um, causing our muscles to actually move and do various things. Specialized neurons called sensory neurons sense. They are the ones that detect the various type of stimuli. So my eyes, the sensory neurons are located in my retina. So the light has to go through my lens, through my pupil, and then land on the back of my eyeball, hits the retina, and then so some sensory neurons are going to be activated there and send messages to my spinal cord, which are going to transmit those messages to my brain. Those stimuli are converted to electrical signals as nerve impulses. If you learn about how nerve impulses actually work, it involves a lot of sodium and potassium. There's some calcium at the... What am I trying to say? Calcium necessary at the synapses, and then you have some neurotransmitters as well too. The brain takes all this information and then makes sense of it, and so this is what we perceive as sight, taste, sound, smell, etc. Although sensory receptors are located throughout the body, they're mostly concentrated in the sense organs, and a lot of this stuff is actually in your head. Your eyes, your mouth, your ears, your nose, it's all for detecting things, and our body can respond to pressure. So you know if you're standing or if you're sitting, even if your eyes are closed. You also have a very complex balance system that involves your uh, ears and the semicircular canals in your ears. That's pretty fun to play around with as well, too. So stimulus is defined as a change in the environment, either internal or external, that is detected by a receptor and elicits a response. So we're going to take a look at something called a reflex arc. A reflex is a rapid unconscious response. So a pupil reflex, one way to check if somebody is brain dead is to shine a light into their eye and see if their pupil actually constricts. They don't have voluntary control over that. That's a brain cranial reflex. Another thing is when the doctor taps your taps just underneath your knee and hits a nerve and then you kick. That's an example of a reflex as well too. So a reflex arc kind of looks like this and I've just put in yellow boxes the main parts that you need to understand. The idea is very simple. You There are nerve fibers, there are sensory neurons that detect various things. Those detected things get sent towards the spinal cord and the spinal cord will transmit information um, to the spinal cord, it'll reach the brain. There may be something called a relay neuron, which is kind of, it's like a relay race. It's passing on the information from the sensory nerve to a motor neuron. A motor neuron is something that acts and does something. And so this motor neuron will be connected to something called an effector, either a muscle or some gland that will secrete something. So that's basically what it is. A reflex arc is just this little arc here from stimulus to response and then understand that the spinal cord actually has a white matter and gray matter the details of which you don't have to fully understand but the spinal cord is part of the central nervous system these nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system on the outside kind of branching off from the spinal cord kind of random kind of thrown in here but uh, it's not really worthy of a separate video but just to understand that some of these natural reflexes or innate behaviors by animals can be acted upon by natural selection so we're seeing evolution as a topic run through all of these units basically the great tit is a type of bird that breeds in spring or early summer and we've found people have found well there's natural variation in these animals and through the natural variation some of them tend to lay eggs early some tend to lay eggs late and some are laying right around the average time but it turns out that laying eggs earlier is actually has been a kind of a, an advantage to reproductive success because 
leaves are starting to open earlier because of changes in climate and the seasons basically so those animals that are laying their eggs earlier are having more success with kids and so those kids grow up with those traits so on average you're starting to see that more and more of these great tits are laying eggs a little bit earlier and the opening of the, the opening of the leaves earlier is good because there's more insects present and that makes more food available for these newly born baby great tits and so if there's more food they're more likely to survive and so natural selection can uh, affect various behaviors this is a cute and sad one hedgehogs curl, curl up into a ball when they sense danger and for the most part that's pretty good however when one of these things is trying to cross the road uh, and you sense a car coming close that's danger if you curl up into a ball you just get run over instead you should be running like crazy so I guess in the beginning there were a bunch of these hedgehogs some natural variation and some hedgehogs didn't curl up into balls instead they just started running away and it turns out that running away that maybe they used to get laughed at hey, look at him he runs away all the time he doesn't know how to curl up into a ball and it turns out when crossing road that one kid who was an outsider running away from everything was actually the one to survive and guess what more likely to make babies more likely to reproduce passes that trade on and you're starting to see more and more hedgehogs that are running away from danger as opposed to the instinctual rolling up into a ball so really quickly we were back let's go back and talk about uh, sensory receptors this is really really fast there are different types of receptors out there thermal receptors in our body can respond to temperature change so these are various things that we can detect right and if I put my hand close to a furnace, I can feel and detect the heat. Even with my eyes closed, mouth closed, nose plugged, and ears plugged in, I can still detect that heat. So thermal receptors uh, obviously exist. They're important in homeostasis. They help us to keep our body temperature within a normal range. Pain receptors, if I keep my hand in front of that heater for a long time, even with my eyes closed, eventually that heat might get so strong that I start to feel pain and these are a separate receptors that are responding to tissue damage what it's telling me is if i keep my hand next to the furnace for a while i might end up damaging or killing cells and that's not a good thing found in all tissues and organs except the brain so literally someone could open up your your skull and start poking you with pins into your brain directly and you will not feel any of that pain but inside you can feel there's you can you're feeling pain if a bullet punctures your 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 body it's not just the pain you feel from the skin it's also from the internal organs as well too self-protective responses such as reflexes are initiated by pain receptors if someone pokes you with a pin you'll usually flinch away really fast you touch a hot pan you're gonna flinch away really fast you don't have to sit there and process and be like yeah that really hurts let me decide to move my hand away it's part of a reflex to help you minimize damage to your tissues Pain is a good thing, and I've talked about this in several different uh, parts throughout the syllabus, but pain is a good thing because it tells you that something is wrong. If you get stabbed in the back literally with a knife and you're bleeding, if you don't know that you've been stabbed in the back because you don't feel any pain, then the next thing you know, you're dead because you've lost blood and you haven't done anything to try and stop the blood loss. Look at that. Oh, I can just keep watching that over and over again. Mechanoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, mechanoreceptors are sensitive to pressure. So imagine, close your eyes and feel where in your body are you feeling pressure? In your feet, on your butt, on your legs, you can tell if you're standing or sitting or laying down, right? So that's an important thing as well. Found in the skin, ears, and muscles, concentrated in the sensitive areas, face, hands, fingertips, and neck. That's the mechanoreceptors. Photoreceptors in the eyes, really easy. In one of the next videos, we're going to talk specifically about the eye, but responds to light. The retina is the part that's actually absorbing the light and uh, transmitting that to specific neurons. It's light energy being converted to electrical signals that are sent to the brain, and then we interpret that as images. Chemoreceptors in the nose and the mouth can respond to chemicals that helps with our taste and uh, ability to smell. I think that's it olfactory receptors it's a fancy way to say that and one more quick thing keeping your balance try this if you stand try standing on one leg and closing your eyes and you'll definitely 
fall over or you're going to have difficulty balancing with your eyes open you can actually see if the horizon is changing so you can make corrections but with your eyes closed you start losing that balance and you start to look really funny but the reason why you don't fall flat on your face is because you can detect when you're falling there are fluid filled chambers uh, near your ear that contain hair cells and as the fluid moves because you're moving from side to side it's going to rock it's going to bump into these hair cells and it's you're going to detect if you're off balance so it's really quite interesting okay that's a good summary of sensory systems